Yeah, I know at times I sound like I make a lot of noise. It's not like I make a lot of noise. I sound hard, you know, because at times I look at situations and I'm like, guys, what? 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 How do these things even happen? How? Aboretum. Guys, like I was telling you, I'm coming from Aboretum, Nairobi. And um, I'm just standing here and what is coming in my mind right now is Michael Otien. This young man, 18 years of age, has been in and out of palliative care hospitals, KNH being one of those for quite a long time long time why is the story of michael otieno disturbing me it's really disturbing me because i don't know families can be this wicked you mean you can leave your blood in the hospital for months without visiting them? the young man to an extent of wanting to commit suicide because every time people are visited he feels like he's left out he feels like you know he doesn't belong so every time his friends would be visited the, uh, this young man used to sneak outside look at how painful this can be and i kept thinking and asking myself really i talked about family in my the video down below i was talking about us as people taking care of our parents but i also want to talk about we as family taking care of our own this young soul has touched the lives of many people i remember there was a call in kenyatta some time back through these social media platforms that people go and visit this young soul throw up to visit him and you know it's so sad that people can desert a kin when they get sick or rather still when they, they get terminal illnesses. I, I don't understand how you can neglect someone who when healthy used to be a good friend, who when healthy used to be, you know, a blessing to your life. And then all of a sudden because they have a terminal illness and they're admitted in a hospital bed, you neglect them, you don't go check on them. And then there's one thing you forget as a person that sickness is not registered under anyone's name. Sickness can hit anyone's door. You can be walking on these streets and all of a sudden something happens and you're paralyzed for life. You can be walking in this street and something happens and you, you know, you're left helpless for life. And that's why I talked about taking care of our family members because in such dark times and in such times the people we need are our family members they're the people who can come alongside nurses and other people who take care of you know the nursing cares in the hospital those people who are in the hospitals are the people who can wipe your poop they're the people who can change your diapers but alongside these people who are paid to do so and let me tell you something i was in a hospital the other day and a patient called on a nurse in a nursing station. I'm not going to mention which hospital was this. Do you know what happened? Do you really want to know what happened? This nurse clicked, literally, because she was caught to change. The, the patient was crying that she's almost emptying her bowels on herself. And the nurse clicked. And I looked at this one and said, this is a misplaced calling. This is a totally misplaced calling. I'm not going to mention the hospital because... I don't want to expose anybody's identity. But I want to let you know, with an example of this young man, Michael Otieno, that it is so sad. When Michael was energetic, he was everybody's darling. But now, because he's an orphan, who was left under the care of his family, and he got sick, he's been sick, since birth, sickle cell anemia, and since he's been in and out of hospitals, then it means he's a burden to family. I don't get how someone who is sick becomes a burden to family. I don't get how someone who is unwell becomes a burden to you. And there's one thing you forget that this body, these bodies are fragile, they're frail. 
Today they are blossoming like flowers. Tomorrow they could be different. So I don't know why you treat people who are terminally ill with discontent, with disdain. I don't get it. To the family of Michael Lotieno, I want to talk to you. I don't know. You may never watch this, but karma is very funny. It comes unexpected. This child has been crying in the hospital to an extent of wanting to commit suicide. He said that he's actually been looking for someone he can call a parent. Why? Because he feels alone. And you people who have got a chance, you know, to support this loved one, you leave him, get adopted by a foreign family, and you people are alive. You people are living. You're not dead. You got a case to answer to God, not to anybody. So I sat back thinking and thinking loud and clear. And I said, if you treat a terminally ill person in such a disdained way, time comes when you yourself will need such support. Time comes when you yourself will need someone to support you. But karma never forgives. People will abandon you. And you know why they'll abandon you? Because you set a bad example at the beginning. This child has been crying left, right and center saying that he, he wishes, I even don't know. You go to Tuko, Google Tuko, and you will see this, this kid, 18 years. No, he's actually an adult. He's a teenager. Not actually a teenager, he's an adult. And this adult, 18 years, Michael Otieno. He says when you have a parent, treasure them. Because there comes a time in life when you look at that seat and you see it's vacant and empty. And you treated your parents wrongly and you wish, I wish my parents were here. I would go back and ask for forgiveness. Michael Otieno feels lost. And as days goes by, he's losing hope. I hope his newfound family will encourage him and tell him that life is a face. That he should not give up on himself because of, you know, I don't know even what to say. Hmm? Ah, yeah, I don't know what to say. These are prayers of prayer. And all I would ask God is that God, may you remember this young soul. Yeah, they say sickle cell is a disaster. But I know, God, there's no disease that you cannot heal. I know, God, there is nothing that comes to you by surprise. I know God you can change a story of Michael or Tieno and he can get well and continue with his normal businesses. I know God you can do miracles and wonders. It doesn't matter how hard the situation seems. It doesn't matter how hard it looks like. But I know God you can deal with this case yourself. This child needs you to comfort him. He was even showing a leg that is rotting. And I kept quiet and asked myself, really? Who abandons someone who is unwell? Hmm? I stayed with my ailing dad for quite a while. That's a story for another day. And I remember we could pour urine that was mixed with blood. Hmm? I remember we used to take turns to do that. So I wonder about you, parent, grandmother, grandfather, auntie, uncle, brother, sister, who leave someone in hospital because they are sick. Or they're suffering from a terminal illness you leave them in hospital you leave them to be taken care of by other people you don't go visit them in hospitals and forget you yourself can become a victim of a terminal illness anyone who has not dealt with any terminal illness case you can never know how hard it is until it gets it knocks to your door i keep telling people you can never know how hard death is until it knocks right direct in your door you keep telling people rest in peace. You keep visiting people for Matanga and all these things. But unless death hits in your doorstep, you can never tell how painful death is. You can never tell how challenging a terminal illness is unless one of your close-knit family is suffering from terminal illness. And I'll tell you something and listen and to listen to me good. Don't treat people with disdain because they are sick. Don't treat people with disrespect because they have been ill for quite a while. The woman with the issue of blood, 
who touched the helm of the garment of Jesus Christ. You know what happened? Jesus was about his own businesses. This woman was labeled by names. She was called the woman who used to bleed in that particular village. She had visited all the gynas in that particular place and she never got a chance to get better. And I want to tell you today that this woman developed just an aorta of faith and she touched the helm of the garment of Jesus Christ. You understand why? Jesus had not come for this woman. Let me remind you, Jesus was going about his businesses. But this woman touches the helm of his garment. And she's made all. And her story changes overnight. A story may change for that child, Michael Otino, who has been abandoned by family. A story may change for you who has a back issue that has lasted for years. A story may change for you who's been suffering from a back problem that has lasted for years. A story may change for you who has been suffering from diabetes. A story may change for you who has been suffering from all kinds of illnesses. And I came to remind you today that you just need to develop a small faith. And it doesn't matter how long it's going to take for you to receive that healing. But I came to promise you that it's going to happen for you. I came to promise you that you're not going to give up because God is there for you. Michael Otieno, you're not going to give up. God is capable of healing you and taking you back to the story you used to tell. It doesn't matter what family members are saying. It doesn't matter who has abandoned you. But I came to remind you that Jesus has the capability of changing your story, changing your narrative. Treat people bad at your own peril. Treat people who are terminally ill bad. People with autism. People with Alzheimer's, people with all these kind of terminal illnesses, treat them bad at your own peril. I'm telling you, karma just rotates around. When it is your turn, you look for someone to even hold your hand for you to step a stair. You never find. And who are the people who are going to be found in the kingdom of God? Are the people who fed the poor? Are the people who clothed the poor? Are the people who went to prison to visit people? Are people who took care of the sick? What are you doing? Abandoning someone who is unwell because you think you have a ticket for health? Oh my dear, think and think good. This story of Michael Otieno is, is trending. And I look at this young man and I look at where he comes from. And I say this often, oh God is the father of orphans, has been abandoned by family completely to an extent of his mind running to commit suicide. But who is God? My God, you know, God is with you. I'm communicating to you from here that God is with you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah, I know at times I sound like I make a lot of noise. It's not like I make a lot of noise. I sound hard, you know, because at times I look at situations and I'm like, guys, what? 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 How do these things even happen? How? How do you abandon your kin in the hospital? I've dealt with someone who has terminal illness. A story for another day. I know how draining this is. It takes someone who fears God. Not just fearing God. Residence, patience, and a lot. Multiple of a lot of things. It takes quite a lot of things. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm telling you that from this place where I'm standing. That take care of that ill person with a lot of love they didn't choose to get sick you're not any special we can't see you special because you have held in totality you're not any special thank god thank god approach that cause to thanksgiving because of totality of hell don't look at people who are unwell like a bother when it is your turn what will you do when people treat you like a bother because people may want to pay back hey guys Let's keep this motion coming in life from Abu Radem. I thank you so much for always subscribing and watching my videos. I thank you so much for always keeping it real. Thank you so much for more than 800 subscribers as at now. Run to a thousand. When you pass through my page, watch. Watch, 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 guys. Hours goes a long way. I love you so much. You're always in my heart. I pray for you that God may remember you, your family and folks. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit.